Thank you for staying with us. Malaria is transmitted throughout Nigeria with 97% of the population at risk. According to the 2021 World Malaria Report, Nigeria had the highest number of global malaria cases. That's 27% of global malaria cases and the highest number of deaths, 32% of global malaria deaths in 2020. The country accounted for an estimated 55.2% of malaria cases in West Africa in 2020, and the case numbers increased 5.3% between 2017 and 2020, from 298 to 314 per 1,000 of the population at risk. Deaths also increased from 4.7% from 0.92 to 0.97 per 1,000 of the population at risk during that same period. Wow, these numbers are really daunting, and we really want to know how we can eliminate malaria in Nigeria. Please just say what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038 You could also tweet at us at WeShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WeShow. I was saying that I heard, well, actually, I heard for the first time today that malaria kills. I didn't know people actually die from malaria. Yeah. So that means that we actually take these things granted yes we sometimes. do yes we do <sighs> okay well, none of us are doctors but thank god that we have an expert in the house tonight who is actually going to talk to us and let us know how we can actually eliminate malaria because it's very disturbing when you see these numbers and see that nigeria is even one of the countries top, you know yeah. the, the, the top um countries in the world you know where people actually die from malaria in the studio today, life, we have Dr. Akin Timi Lulua, who is also known as Dr. Seven. She's a medical professional from the College of Medicine, University of Lagos. She's also passionate about bridging the knowledge gap in the health sector and the general Nigerian populace through advocacy, particularly leveraging technology and social media. She currently co-runs an online platform that allows medical professionals the platform to leverage technology to solve problems in the health sector. Dr. Tami is the co-founder of Care Medicals, an online platform that is passionate about quick response to medical emergencies. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Tami. You look so beautiful, by the way. So I barely ever see doctors that look this way. Well, doctors that I know. Melanie is popping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Uh, I know. Okay, so first things first. How is Nigeria, or why? Is Nigeria one of the top countries causing deaths? So I would say that um, we actually have a population that mm. is aware of what malaria. Everybody mm. knows what malaria is. So you go to the next door neighbor, he's sick, he tells you that, oh, I have malaria. Mm. So you, you know that the information about malaria is quite um, widespread. Yeah. But I feel like we are also <laughs> a nation where it's self medicating and um, mm. um, not just self medicating, a lot of mysterious beliefs about health is like applauded yeah. so it's like you are shocked that malaria still kills people but it is a thing because by the time people come to the hospital they are like in the end stages mm. of malaria they've done everything they can do before they come to the hospital they ask their neighbor they've asked a friend that somebody has prescribed somebody has diagnosed they've gone to a chemist so they've exhausted all options for coming to the um hospital so i think that's one of the major reasons that um, malaria is still such a thing in our nation and also um it's like um our environment so we we have a lot of people in this low um, socioeconomic class so you can't ever remove the fact that I, hygiene mm -hmm. where you live all yeah. of that predispose people to malaria so definitely i think those are the top two reasons okay so before i let the ladies go let me also ask because this is another question that has been in my head for a while cerebral malaria mm -hmm. so there's actually malaria that affects the brain how does that work so um cerebral malaria is like when you have high levels so, you know ma well, malaria is caused by parasites yes yeah. yeah, so plasmodium so when the other parasite is the, ha the numbers are quite elevated it cr enters the brain and then mm. you begin to see manifestations of cerebral that's what we call cerebral malaria so basically it's malaria in the brain mm. so you begin to see a lot of um, there's coma there's person okay. It's different people it comes differently. Different. Some people may just be lethargic, some unresponsive. I've seen it once in a friend and it's terrifying because it's like it's you you are wondering what is wrong. It's terrifying to say the least, honestly. Well how how do they um how do they get to that point? Mm. So like we like I said earlier, um you know that we said 
malaria is such a thing in our nation where everybody thinks they have malaria. So if you um, sneeze, you are, you are suspecting malaria. You have a <laughs> headache, you are suspecting malaria. So you are self-treating. You are not going to the hospital to check whether you actually have malaria. Yeah. And oftentimes, you have people use malaria drugs to the point where they become resistant. Mm. So you've used the drug severally, even mm -hmm. when you don't have malaria. So when you actually have malaria, the drug is not working. Okay. So the parasite is able to... Um, reach high levels such that it crosses the brain and you actually have to go to the hospital to get treated and then the treat we are wondering okay is the um, parasite resistant to this drug is it resistant to dr that drug what drugs can we use to treat this particular um, malaria in this person so yeah what are the likely symptoms of cerebral uh, malaria so we can see lethargy we can see coma unconsciousness the person is saying things you don't sometimes it looks like madness in fact oh. but then it's not so one of the things, but one of the things that um, when you see an adult who has said, "Oh, I had the person had fever mm. for maybe a number of days. I was self-treating. I was sneezing. I used so so and so drugs." And the person comes to the hospital and says, "Oh, that the person is not answering me anymore. I called him. He's not responsive. He's not eating. He's just looking. He's just staring into thin um, thin." Uh, thin space and all of that so you're thinking oh there are different differentials but you're thinking first things first because of the how, how endemic malaria in, um, our environment is you're first thing thinking okay maybe it's a cerebral malaria and then you check so just a quick question how many types of malaria do we have so <laughs> I do think there are types of malaria. <laughs> <laughs> right. yes. so, so, so is it the advancements of the illness? Yes. Okay, so, so how does that, all that the stages? So um, the there's malaria. <laughs> the regular malaria. Regular malaria. Then there's cerebral malaria. I think that cerebral malaria just has its own name because it is different from mm. the regular malaria that we see. So there are not really stages of malaria. So there's the normal fever, the headaches, different symptoms for different folks. Mm -hmm. But the cerebral malaria is different because she's not the normal fever you are having. You are wondering what exactly is wrong with this person. Is there a... So like I mentioned earlier, the myth of AA. Yeah. <laughs> is that really <laughs> true? Because... Yeah, so what, what's your take on that? Does it have to like... Is it a thing that all AAs... Mm. If you are seeking it's malaria, you are. So what I actually know of is the fact that something about the AS genotype gives you a resistance to mm. malaria. Okay. So you are not easily predisposed to malaria as the normal person. So mm. maybe the regular people are AA people, so are, they are less resistant to malaria than the AS um, genotype. So is there a reason why? I think it has to do with the um, shape of the red blood cells and all of that. Mm. So going into that deeply now, I mean mm. going through pathophysiology and all of that. But mm. I think it has majorly has to do with the shape of the red blood cell because the um, AS has a little bit of S. So mm. that's why we advise AS to AS not to get married. So um, they have the, something in their red blood cell that makes it difficult for the malaria parasite to easily enter and oh. begin to light and cause all the symptoms that we mm -hmm. see in malaria. So, I, so when people say AA are more predisposed, I think it's because they have, um, they've, AS has a higher level of um, resistance to coming down in malaria. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. what I know. I'm glad mm -hmm. you said that because I was telling them yesterday that <laughs> I literally get malaria every month. Yeah, and they were looking at me like, what are you talking about? But no jokes. Like, so I've noticed that Oh, maybe, maybe every month is a stretch. Mm -hmm. Let me say every other month. Yeah. Right. I just know that, okay, by the time I start feeling that weakness in my joints, please don't judge me. I, <laughs> I start to kill that one. But it's because I know it's always been like that for yeah. me, right? So once I start to have a headache, because I barely get a headache. So once I start to get a headache and then I start to feel weak in my joints, I'm just like, okay, maybe it's time for me to go get money. Right? Yeah, I, sure. Now that you've talked about drug resistance, I want to I want to discuss that because I know that most times that's what happens to people. People, yeah. once you just have a headache or you just there's just one slight fever or sometimes even stress, maybe you just have a mm -hmm. flu or something, the next thing they are jumping to the pharmacy to go and buy one at whatever or one <laughs> come, or come or whatever, <laughs> you know. So what would you say? Uh, what would you say about that? So I would say that the truth is that stress predisposes people to malaria. And right. in our climate, we are very stressed. Mm -hmm. You have read Nigeria. In fact, <laughs> if you are living in Lagos, <laughs> you are already stressed. True. So definitely, you have, most of the time, whenever you come down with something, and there are different symptoms in different people, that's why we advise that you know your body. Mm. So you know that, okay, maybe when I, I have malaria that you've um, tested, and I'm very sure, I went to the hospital, I did a test, I did laboratory, and everything came out with um, malaria. Yeah, positive and all of that, I had these symptoms. Mm -hmm. So when these symptoms are coming up, I'm beginning to... So in fact, 
oftentimes when people come to the hospital we treat them symptomatically mm. because we have a list of symptoms when somebody is saying oh i have a yes, fever i have a headache something we, we are first giving malaria drugs mm. but the thing about resistance to malaria is that a lot of people abuse drugs mm -hmm. okay. so you have to be very careful you know that when you have a headache you're already popping malaria pills yeah you have slight um, you are feeling dizzy somebody is popping malaria and i feel like my apart from parastamol malaria drug is the next abuse most abused drug in mm. nigeria it's crazy because i feel like one of the um, biggest if i was going to open a pharmacy i would just be selling malaria drugs <laughs> <laughs> it's a move. It's a move. <laughs> if you, anybody that comes you, you hear even the pharmacist the chemist tells you oh why won't you buy malaria drug just mm. to prevent but there's a there's a place for prevention, you know, yeah. and we give anti-malarials to prevent, especially in pregnant women, mm -hmm. because we know how bad malaria can be in yeah. pregnant women, and it can affect their children. But when we are now, when we are now seeing people going to the chemist, and we do outreaches, medical outreaches, right, yeah. and people are begging you for malaria drugs, please give me, wow. I need it, I'm having just a headache, in just in case. <laughs> and in fact, I'm, so what you said is valid, but you also have to put in points that okay have i used paracetamol and it's not working have i rested and it's not working because mm. the antidote to stress it shouldn't mm -hmm. be malaria drugs yeah. it should be resting yes, actually, it should yes. be okay what, what have i eaten have mm -hmm. i eaten properly well. am i well hydrated and all of that and when all of that is not working then you resort to malaria drugs but i would always advise that if you can get a test done mm. or there's this thing we call rapid diagnostic tests mm. is very i don't know whether pharmacy sell them now but then you can self-test for malaria at home i mm. think that's one of the ways when we're going to talk about elimination mm -hmm. of malaria yeah, yeah. one of the things we should advise people to do is t test in your house mm -hmm. so if it's positive buy the malaria drug. nobody's stopping you mm -hmm. but if it's not positive it should be you're not a doctor so why are you popping pills Dose. yeah okay so <clears throat> another thing people usually would say um the climate in africa the tropical it's a tropical climate and all of that so do you think that has anything to do with um the high level of malaria in our in our continent absolutely i think um especially because mosquitoes tend to thrive in that kind of okay. environment yeah. so that's why you want to you travel out mm -hmm. and then you, people are not coming in fact before a white doctor can think about malaria is going to take a while mm. because their climb doesn't allow for the growth of such um who call them insects, insects i yeah. guess if mosquitoes are insects <laughs> yeah but yes but that is majorly why it's mm. a problem in our environment and the fact that uh we have a lot of people who are like i said earlier in the low social economic class yeah so you can't remove that because you can't there are some things that hygiene mm -hmm. can't take away there are some things that proper and um, you know you are living right in front of a gutter you are living um, in front of a canal all of those you know you are breeding mosquitoes so while our environment and our um, climate actually encourages the growth of mosquitoes they are breeding i would also say that the fact that we have a high level of uneducated people mm -hmm. people who are living below the um, poverty line that also really skyrockets the amount of malaria cases we have so mm. yeah Mm. Just a quick one. I wanted to just quickly find out. I mean, I know that the their symptoms, right? Yeah. But there are also some people that their their body doesn't really show symptoms mm -hmm. in time. So you mentioned earlier that um, dehydration can cause headaches and mm. a couple of other symptoms that could people could think oh do I have malaria? So is there a particular way? Like what what are the things? If for instance I'm the person, what do I need to pay attention to? For my, I mean, to my body, what are the signs I need to pay attention to just so that, am I stressed? Do I have malaria? What are the things I need to just focus on just to be able to determine? Do I need to go get tested? Do I need to just rest? What are the things that you would ask? I mean, so I, I would say that it varies because every body okay. is different. Mm -hmm. But there are some common things that we can see. So fever is one of them. Mm -hmm. So when you see fever in an adult in, in our climb, especially fever that is relapsing so it goes today in the night you are fine during the day in the night it comes back and then you're not all of a sudden you're feeling like especially that's how my body works so in the morning i'm jumping in the night i'm wondering what happened mm. what's going on you're hot then headaches recurring headaches that okay i use parasite when i've rested like i said you have to go through you have to know your body mm. well enough be observant yes you have to be observant but then when you're thinking head, headaches fever then you're also looking at okay you, you, loss of appetite suddenly i'm not eating properly and food is irritating yeah. me and then there's this 
thing for um, a lot of people when they complain about a bitter taste yeah. in their mouth. Yeah. So yeah. oftentimes yes. it's pointing at mm -hmm. malaria. We are thinking, okay, most likely malaria. And then we're asking when last did you use an anti malaria? Mm -hmm. Is it maybe three months or ago? Or are you resistant to malaria? How often do you use these drugs? Mm -hmm. So you are telling us every two weeks I'm using malaria drugs. I'm thinking, okay. Something's <laughs> off here. Yeah, so so I, I read that the World Health Organization, um, they recommended the use of a particular vaccine. Mm -hmm. I think RTS, and that's for children. Mm -hmm. How well is that going? Is that um, in full effect? Is it working? Have there been any good results from it? Or is this something that should be dropped? <laughs> so if it is, the malaria vaccine was just recently signed by the, um, I think, by the president mm. to uh, like allow the yeah, average yeah, Nigerian yeah. get into. But so I would say that so far, because it's just signed, I feel like it's not something that will be um, adopted adopted quickly. Hmm. So people already we have a certain resistance so and they believe. If you know the amount of stress that came with the COVID vaccination, so people are telling yes. you that. Oh, the, the, they they want to implant six, something six, six. something in yeah. our body, mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. So it's it's going to take a while before it's accepted. So we haven't really done testing and all of that. So we can't yeah. really say that this is the efficacy or this is how well the vaccine works because it is not yet well adopted. Mm. So it is something new. We are still looking at it. Okay, is it going to work? And in children, you can't really say because children can't tell you oh i'm feeling like this, how this. I feel. yeah. yeah so you have to be th looking at them okay is she crying when i give the vaccination how is she two hours after has the malaria has fever dropped so tired, is there yeah. a spike so you have to be and it's going to take a while maybe yeah. some years before you can know okay this is how well the vaccine is going to be working and should we adopt it should we drop it it's still a new innovation so mm. i think it's something that we will still be looking at for mm. the time being have other countries okay. adopted it ghana kenya i'm not so sure about other countries but i think for um, um president to say i think it is um I, I i can't say for sure but i think some african countries have adopted it especially countries that yes, are endemic yeah. because africa has the highest rate of um, death, 95% of death mm. from malaria. Mm -hmm. So I think sev several African countries are looking to adopt it, but some have already. But Nigeria's giant of Africa, if our country adopts it and it works, definitely other African countries should be looking to. If you're just tuned in, we're discussing eliminating malaria in Nigeria with Dr. Akin Temilolua, aka Dr. Seven. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Uh, you can also send an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818384663 or tweet at us at WishoAfrica1 with the hashtag Wisho. So now let's get down to it. How can we eliminate malaria in Nigeria? So first things first, I think that we have to sit down to look at why is at the levels of malaria still high. If you do not know why they are still high, you can't talk about eliminating it. Mm. So we have to look at why do people, is it that people do not have access to hospitals? Why mm. are they always abusing malaria drugs? So I think one of the things we must do first is to evaluate the current system. Is it working? In my opinion, it's not because for us to be topping the charts of malaria globally as of 2021, it yes. is bad. Yeah. I don't know whether new research has been conducted, but mm. we have to evaluate the system and say, okay, how can we better the systems? Mm. And then we can also ever take away the um, fact that political will comes in handy a lot. So in, um, I would say that if you're going to be doing anything, infrastructure, healthcare infrastructure, be playing a huge role so we'll be looking we'll be looking at okay do we have public health centers that people can go to when i'm having it so no why do you have to come to Luth when you're having a headache or a fever mm. that's a tertiary health center mm. that should be the last resort yeah. so why can't you go to the hospital the primary health center health next centers, to you yes and then tell them that oh i'm having a headache please can i get a rapid diagnostic test <laughs> kit to check or can i walk into the next pharmacy next to me if i can afford it why can't i buy it mm -hmm. but we also have to look at the fact that people cannot afford a lot of things so the primary health center should be able to have these things at snap of fingers mm -hmm. that, okay you know what mm -hmm. let us check and then i think another thing which also do is that intersectoral um and participations you should encourage so it is not just a healthcare problem obviously the malaria cripples the economy when someone is sick person can't function properly so we should be looking at um, how can we bring um, why, why can't we have financial institution partner with the health institution say okay you know what let us um, fund innovations mm -hmm. in um, for 
combating malaria. Yeah. The ma malaria vaccination, I don't think, it, I don't, I'm not so sure now whether it was a, Mal a, a Nigerian that developed the vaccine. But we have the highest level of malaria globally. Why aren't Nigerians in discussion? So, yeah. Why aren't Africans talking about this? Why aren't we, we the ones innovating our way out of malaria? Why do we have to wait for the whites? <laughs> and we we'll hear people saying lack of funding, all of that. So when we have intersectoral partnership, so we are, we are talking about, okay, malaria is our um, focus now. Bring innovations that solve our problem. And then we'll be looking at, okay, how can we partner with you? How can we scale this? How can we make it affordable? How can we make it um, something that everybody has access to? How do we remove the stereotypes surrounding um, all of this? And then you also have to look at the fact that the doctors in Nigeria are not enough. So you can't ever um, say that until a doctor treats you. Mm -hmm. So we have to remove that and say, okay, how can we get people on board to actually combat this issue? So you can't be waiting for doctors to come and, okay, cerebral malaria has to be treated in the hospital, definitely. Mm -hmm. But then why can't we have people that, okay, we train them yeah. with skills, we equip them with skills to, you know, combat malaria. It's not, it's not, if it's, it's just like COVID. It wasn't medical practitioners who gave the Ooh, vaccine. Yeah. So we should be looking at things like that. How can we get people to, um, you know, join the healthcare force just to equip them with skills to fight against malaria. Mm. I think there are so many ways to eliminate malaria, but I think these are just a few that come to mind now. <laughs> this thing that you just said now, it takes a village. Mm. Yeah. So imagine areas like Makoko, mm -hmm. that these people are living mm -hmm. in a swamp. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no way these guys will not have malaria. I'm sorry I'm being emotional, but... It's just as if they'll, be, they'll keep going to the hospital round and round and round. every now yes. and then. And for people like that, the drugs wouldn't work in their systems mm -hmm. anymore because they're going back to... It's a lot. It's, it's a lot that Nigerians are basically going through. So if anybody... I mean, this, we need like people in the real estate um, sector to partner with the government in ensuring that this, Absolutely. this works because this is a healthcare problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the same time, it's also affecting every... Like, yeah, it's a cycle. You're treating malaria exactly. today. Yes. You still go back yeah. to the house to go and sleep <laughs> and you still get bitten by the malaria, again. by the um, mosquito, mosquito, mosquito again. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you talked about doctors you know, not being enough and leaving the country and um, training people who are not particularly medically inclined mm -hmm. and bringing them into the force so they can also maybe administer certain or, you know, help people who have these conditions as well. But I would ask, do you think that's actually feasible in this country? Honestly, I think that if we come to a point where we realize that malaria is a national problem mm. and drop all the, oh, okay, um, I'm a doctor, you are a nurse, you are a nursing assistant, all of that. And we realize that this is a problem. Mm -hmm. And if we do not enter, we'll still be topping the chart come 2030. Yeah. Of course. So all of that, so all of that has to come to play. And we have to be thinking about this is something we have to join hands together. So okay. if it's feasible currently, I would say to an extent, you already see people self-treating. Mm -hmm. And they are not doctors. Mm -hmm. So why not just equip them? E equip them, you know, give them, tell them, okay, these are the symptoms you should be looking out for. These are the things you should not do. These are what we advise you should do. You know, come get the vaccine and all of that. Equip, um, not necessarily none, but if you already equip people with skills, you remove them from a place of not being ignorant. So telling them that, okay, if you do this, this has the side effects. If you do that, this can lead to this and all of that. And you explain to people that this is why we're bringing mm -hmm. you on board. You're, you, you know, some, there's no how we cannot say that we know a family member who currently has malaria or a brother who is currently on you know, there's always that mm -hmm. in that coming mm -hmm. to play. So I think that it is feasible if we all decide that okay, this is a national problem and we have we all mm -hmm. have a role to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Alero, you said something about um, the real estate guys partnering with the government and all that. I feel like that's a stretch because we know yes, the country actually. that we're in. But I'm, I was <laughs> going to ask, do you think providing things like maybe insecticide treated nets mm -hmm. and maybe the insecticides itself and do you, do you think things like that can oh, work? No. I mean, actually, for people living in those kind of um, exactly. unhygienic conditions. I think the best thing to provide for them is a vaccine. Mm -hmm. Right. Because how many times we've outreaches provide in, these with things. They provide several these times. Things, yeah. You go for an outreach, they're giving you an exercise. You go for an outreach, they're yeah, giving you mosquito net. Mosquito net. Yeah. You're wondering how many times because how long <laughs> would we continue to, you know, fight okay, let's prevent malaria. Yeah. Let's permanently 
um, eradicate, eradicate it. it. Yeah. Get a vaccine. So the things we should be looking at is how can we subsidize the vaccination for people in the in this kind of environment so that we go there and vaccinate them en masse. Mm -hmm. yeah. So instead of just giving them, because there's no how you want to give them, definitely we'll go to work, they'll be beaten by mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. They are fishers. It's true. Fish are fish are it's true. And they, they even yeah. live underwater. Yeah. Yes, they live in, right in the swamp. Yeah. Yeah. So it's there's nothing. We're even going to fun. Mm. Let's move to our boarding schools. People in boarding schools. Even I was in boarding That's school, my mommy bought mosquitoes a hundred times. But mm -hmm. the mosquitoes in that my boarding That's school, true. Like, they were more than the. Mm. That's true. I said, thank you. <laughs> it's like they have to, they will pierce through. Oh, my so, Oh, my God. So okay. I get you. I understand what you mean. That, it, it's not, that's not a, 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 a it's, it's, not, it's a sort of temporal yeah, solution, solution, right? So the vaccine is more of a permanent, permanent solution to eradicate them. Okay. But can, we, can anything even be even done? for the people that actually self-medicate is it possible for for instance these pharmacies i'm sure they are regulated right so mm -hmm. is there a regulation that can be passed that would make people that would make the pharmacies not sell drugs without prescription mm -hmm. i mean malaria is just like a regular drug yeah. but you know people still have to go to the pharmacy and show a prescription to buy a certain type of medication but to avoid self-medicating I, I feel like something has to be done what do you think so the issue is that um it's double, it's like that sword. Mm. Double -edged. It's double edged. <laughs> so, the moment you begin to ask people to get a prescription <laughs> to get malaria drugs, mm. somebody is going to start making drugs <laughs> and selling it at the back of his house. Yeah, right. Or making That's herbs yeah. and selling it at the back of his house. So, you are pushing people away from, okay, this is a problem. We accept it's our problem, but we still know it's safer. Mm. Mm. So, it's a safer, it's like, being between the deep blue sea and, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean even fun. the prescription you that means you're asking people people have to go to the hospital yes, yes. which a lot of people are avoiding mm -hmm. because of the cost oh, of actually yes. seeing a doctor. But, doctor but the fact that and the, the number has gone up mm -hmm. i mean you mentioned that before i mean in 2021, 2021 before yeah. then the number was not this mm -hmm. high so what needs to be done to ensure that the number doesn't go up again because it will go up again mm -hmm. something has to be done I mean, even our, even our environment where we live in, it's, it's not oh, yeah. exactly conducive. Yes, I, I mean, the kind of mosquitoes I see in my house. <laughs> Alero. <laughs> Those things are like soldiers. <laughs> once you just see one, and they don't look small, they are so Massive. big. So once you just see you, I will not be able to sleep until I'm just looking. <laughs> if I catch you. <laughs> so just imagine in, in the kind of area where I stay, which of course is not exactly Swampy. so clean. It's not swampy. But, but it's not exactly clean you yeah. get and you probably have um okay they say loma will come take up your refuse yeah. and stuff like that i mean it's we're getting to rainy season mm. and we have places in lekki places on the mainland that gets flooded Reverse. and then sometimes once there is a flood it doesn't go down to maybe two days after and which of course <laughs> water. exactly you have stagnant water yeah. you have mosquitoes coming in mm -hmm. you see people always trying to change their nets there was a time, see, there's no insecticide I've used now that works anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, this um, advert, sorry that I'm digressing, the advert that most of this mosquito, like the insecticide, those, yeah. yeah. When you see the animation with the, <laughs> the, <laughs> heavy, <laughs> the heavy soldier like mosquito coming, you look like this, this, this is exactly what they do. Because even when you spray insecticide, they still, it's just as if they still don't die, mm. they are becoming stronger by the day. The Who mosquitoes knows? are also building resistance. <laughs> yes, right. Yes. Absolutely. Right? Yes, they do, right? Yes. See? I wasn't wrong after all. Yeah. That's why we advise you to change your insecticide, you know, just to From shock time to them. Because we're the grass. Mosquitoes, I never experienced. <laughs> ah, <laughs> today, is, today is one brand, next tomorrow is another brand. Okay, right. so Dr. Timmy, if we hear you correctly, you're saying that the permanent way to eradicate or eliminate um, malaria in Africa is vaccine absolutely 100 percent. honestly i think mm. i think that's the best thing i heard the news and i literally jumped for joy because there is no innovating your way out of malaria without getting a permanent solution, solution. such as the vaccine yeah. so give people the vaccine let them build permanent immunity against my so i mean no matter how many times it's probably the bite for people who have those um sensitive skin okay. you know you have to be buying cream every now and then because the vaccine doesn't cover that but then <laughs> at least you know that you are sure that every month you'll be at work you will not be down with <laughs> malaria okay all right ladies anything else I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I had malaria. Are you AS? I should ask. I'm AA. Mm. But the reason why I'm saying I can't remember is because I haven't 
fallen like oh i'm i'm feeling i feel yeah. feverish but what i do is like you said take parasitamol go and sleep go and rest because first of all i'm telling myself i'm stressed right. because i know that i've stressed myself so i just go lay down and the next day i wake up and i'm okay hmm the last time i got sick was october last year mm. and it was malaria well, I self-medicated. I will not lie. See, we're confessing. <laughs> we're because confessing. It, it, it came at me. The way it came mm. at me, during the day I was in the meeting, I started to feel feverish, like cold all of a sudden. Mm. So I was like, okay, let me just rest for a bit. I rested for like 30 minutes. And by the time I woke up, Does that feel my body was hot. hot. And after a while, it seemed like it was subsiding. And in the next one, two hours, it knocked me off. I was and I was preparing to travel, mm -hmm. so I was just like, if I go to the hospital, do this before my result comes out, before I do you this, before I get drugs. So I had to self medicate for a few, like for a few days, for like two days, and then I got myself back. But by the time I traveled, I had to go get tested, do like a, run a proper check to be mm -hmm. sure that I'm actually fine. Um, today I saw a video. I mean, it's World Malaria Day yesterday, and yeah. then there is this. Um, medical um hospital so this medical team they went to they actually went to makoko mm. and they were testing them as usual mm. mosquito nets insecticides and all of that and there was something one of the guys who actually live in that area said and he said that oh there is a season for mosquito mm -hmm. so there's a time when the water is salty and there's breed. no mosquito mm. they won't breed but then it gets to a point where the water starts to become sweet <sighs> <laughs> what kind of man is it? Then the mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was, <laughs> how do they even know? I don't know. No, no, I'm sure there must. There, there's there's probably something. something about yeah, that. there's probably yeah, there's, there's probably something there's probably that. something. And it showed a child that was actually walking inside the water, yeah. and you know where you see gutter, and there's like. <clears throat> refuse mm. that was how the water was i think she went to buy something for her mm. mom or something and then she was coming back and she was walking with her pants and just walking inside the water <laughs> and i was just looking at her like this and the guy said see this is what you will see this is like a regular day a way of life. for these people so they have giving to. them mosquito nets and insecticide <sighs> Insecticide is getting more expensive. By the day. It's not 200, 300 like yeah, you used to buy. Yeah, it's not 1.5. 1.5, 1.8, yeah. mm -hmm. almost 2,000 for you to actually buy insecticide. So by the time you spray your room, you and you, when you want to spray, you're not spraying, as if you're spraying perfume. You spray, <laughs> <laughs> you spray very well. So that means in a week or in two weeks, you're done with one kind yeah. of insecticide. In less than and that's weeks. it. Yeah. So these people that they've given it to, I mean, they've done a great job, but in the next two weeks, they're out. Yeah. They're out of insecticide, and there's nothing they can do about it. Yeah. So what happens then? Yeah. And there are a lot of people living mm -hmm. there. That, yeah. People think they're not. I, I think um, in the video they had mentioned about two hundred thousand or four hundred thousand people, yeah. and that's a lot of people. Of course, that's a lot of people. I, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Doctor, tell me any final words for us. I would say that um, we still have a long way to go in eliminating malaria um, in our nation, and by extension, Africa. And one, one thing we must also look at is that not everybody would have access to um, getting tested for malaria. So if we're going to be doing that, we have to look for ways that people don't have to walk into the hospital to get tested. Yeah. And it has to be affordable, something they can do right at their doorsteps. And malaria drugs should also be lethal to, until the vaccination is... Um, has gone round. Gone round. We should be seeing malaria, seeing malaria drugs almost free. Do mm. so you understand? So because we know that a lot of times people can't um, afford it. Absolutely. Afford it. Yeah. <coughs> so I think that's it, basically. Okay. They say, they say if symptoms persist after two days, Look, <laughs> Timmy, thank you so much. It's been quite an insightful conversation. So, personally, I have learned that malaria ah. kills, so we should take this thing very seriously. And I'm also going to appeal to the government as well. I don't know. I'm sure the government also has a role to play in terms of Absolutely. vaccine, helping to clean out the communities, making sure that people are living in more hygienic conditions and all of that. Thank you so much, ladies. It was great having you Thank on the show tonight. You. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. 
And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quotes, here it is again. It's not that easy living with malaria. The reality of the high annual death toll should make that very obvious. And this is by TK Naliaka. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Bye.